focused on. So the last way that hypothermic conditioning can affect muscle mass is by improving insulin sensitivity. So insulin is well known for its role in, in glucose homeostasis, um, and, but it also has a role in protein metabolism. So in skeletal muscle, um, when you're sensitive to insulin, so when insulin is released, you uh, take up glucose into your muscle cells. And this can actually affect protein synthesis by activating AKT, which um, increases protein synthesis by mTOR and also decreases degradation by, uh, by activating FOXO genes, so increase, changing those expression of those genes. And also um, by increasing the uh, uptake of amino acids into your muscle cells, so that affects protein synthesis. And it also inhibits something called the proteasome. The proteasome is this cellular, cellular complex inside your cells that's responsible for degrading a lot of proteins. So this um, inhibits the, that activity from happening. And actually, if you look at type 1 diabetics, the um, ones that cannot make or produce insulin, they have a very severe muscle wasting. wasting and that's because uh, they don't have this inhibition on the proteasome. So their proteasome keeps degrading all these proteins. And so their skeletal muscle um, catabolism is uh, very high. So, um, so how does this relate to the sauna? Well, hyperthermic conditioning in, in a diabetic um, mouse model, so this obese diabetic mouse model, when you put these mice um, for three, three different sessions a week in a 30, uh, I think it was a 30 minute session, um, and this is for 12 weeks, if you hyperthermically condition them three times a week for 12 weeks, um, they actually showed a 31% decrease in insulin, and that corresponded with insulin sensitivity. And what, what they found was that these mice increased the expression of genes called glucose transporters. Specifically, it was GLUT4 transporters in their skeletal muscle. So exposing them to this heat, this hyperthermic conditioning, changed the expression of GLUT4 uh, transporters increased them, and so what happened is when they made when they produced insulin, even though they're insulin resistant, they had an increased expression of glucose transporters, and so they actually took up glucose into their muscle cells, and the cell was like, oh, I got my glucose, I don't need to make, keep making insulin, so it stopped making insulin, and that's why there was a 31% decrease in, in insulin, which is really kind of cool, and I'm hoping to see more research in this area um, on using, you know, something like hyperthermic conditioning or heat stress um, and how that can help improve insulin sensitivity.